Welcome to Doolin.com. Today we'll be going over the replay mod. This video will cover some information about the mod, how to install both mods and setting up FFmpeg, as well as recording within and editing using the built-in timeline. To skip to a certain section of the video, visit the description or see the top comment of this video for all the timecodes. The section we're on will be highlighted at the top. Let's get started. The replay mod is one of the most important mods of modern Minecraft. Rather than adding additional content into the game like other mods, the replay mod gives users an ability not usually given to players with only one account, third person perspective. This has made it a staple in the Minecraft content creator community, but it can be more than a little difficult at times to work with if you're new to the mod. Created by MC users Crushed Pixel and Johnny0702, the replay mod has changed the scope of Minecraft videos, painting the YouTube scene with beautiful time lapses. These time lapses are used by a wide variety of people, ranging from content creators on Casual Craft all the way up to the big names on Hermitcraft. But how does it all work? Well, it all starts by downloading the two mods you'll need for this to work, Fabric and the Replay Mod itself. Go to replaymod.com download or click the link in the description below and pull this page up. Click Download to begin the download for the Replay Mod. Next, we want to install Fabric, which requires the latest version of Fabric as well as the Fabric API. Select whichever option best suits your needs. I'm going with Vanilla. For more information on the different options and what they're for, click on Installation Instructions at the top. Make sure you're downloading the latest versions to ensure everything works correctly. After all the files have been downloaded, click the Fabric Installer to begin the installation process. Once that is complete, you will either need to locate or create a mods folder in your .minecraft. Drag the Fabric API download as well as the Replay Mod download into your mods folder. Next, we will talk about FFmpeg. FFmpeg is the multimedia framework used to edit in the Replay Mod. Without it, you can't edit. This tutorial goes over the method to use FFmpeg specifically for Minecraft, but if you plan on using FFmpeg for other things, see the description for the alternate method. To begin, go to this link or click on the one in the description labeled FFmpeg download. You will be brought to this screen. Select the options that fit your computer and leave the last option on static. Then begin your download. Unzip the file. I'm using 8-Zip Lite. It's a free app for Windows, but you can also use WinZip or WinRAR if you already have one of them. Go back to your .minecraft folder and create a new folder labeled FFmpeg. Copy the contents from the now unzipped FFmpeg folder into the new folder you just created in .minecraft. Using this method, you don't have to run a batch script, which can be difficult to understand on Windows 10. Again, this will only work with Minecraft, so if you plan on using FFmpeg for other things, please see the description for the alternate installation method. Now that everything is installed, open Minecraft. After hitting Launch, a .fabric folder should appear in your .minecraft. Now it's time to explain how to record using the Replay mod. The creators make this very straightforward. When you join into a world, it will automatically start recording. You can tell by the recording sign at the top left of your screen. To pause a recording, go into your pause menu and hit pause recording. This will temporarily stop the recording and you can hit resume recording to continue where you left off. To stop recording, hit stop record or disconnect from the world or server. Stopping a recording will save that session as a file. As you leave, a saving replay file message will appear at the top right of the screen. To access your recording files, click on replay viewer. Editing in the Replay mod can be very tricky at times. To begin the editing process, go to Replay Viewer and select the clip that you wish to work with. Pause the clip once you load into your world. Now you can begin to work your time-lapse magic. Line up your camera to where you want the beginning of your time-lapse to start and click the diamond-shaped item at the left of the timeline. This is called a position keyframe, and it tracks where your camera position will be at any given time. You will also want to select the time keyframe indicated by the hourglass next to the keyframe icon. Each replay requires at least two position keyframes and two time keyframes to render. Most time lapses can be successful looking without delving too much into the time keyframes, so we will stick primarily with the position keyframes for the purposes of this video. Next, determine how long you want your time lapse to be. I want mine to be about 30 seconds, so I will go to 30 seconds on my bottom timeline and add another position keyframe and time keyframe, making sure I'm where I want to be position-wise when the video ends before adding them. Now, we line up our top timeline with our bottom timeline. Double click on the first time keyframe you set and set the time index to around 30 seconds. This gives the chunks enough time to load and for you to get into your position. The timeline position should be at zero. 
Next, hover over the end of the top timeline to see how long your replay is. Double click the second time keyframe and put that time into time index and make sure your timeline position is where you want it, mine being at 30 seconds. Scrolling back to the beginning of our bottom timeline and hitting play, we see a time lapse of what I built with the camera path following the position keyframes. Feel free to adjust and add as many position keyframes as you'd like. You can also change the shaders with Optifine installed and resource packs to give your replay a whole new look. Once you're happy with your replay, select the save icon located next to the play button to render. It's very important you not tab out while the replay is rendering, as that can cause the game to crash. Once it's done rendering, you will hear which signifies a successful render. From there, you can take that clip, put it into your editing software, add music, and you have a finished product ready to hit YouTube. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more content from me in the future, please consider subscribing. My other tutorials are also located in the description below. Have something else you want me to cover? Leave a comment or message me on Twitter at DoolinYT. Thanks again. Bye now.